The following video is meant to help you get started with the winning digital customers customer segmentation spreadsheet. And on a very high level, this customer segmentation spreadsheet is meant to help you make sure that the research subjects you're bringing in to conduct customer research fit the characteristics that you're interested in knowing more about across your customer dimensions. And so the way this spreadsheet is set up is that we have instructions and then four tabs here. One set is just calculations and recruits, and then there is another set with example calculations and example recruits. Right now, the example tabs I have are blank, and that's because I'm going to fill them out during this video, and then you will see them fully filled in in the copy of the spreadsheet that you download. But these tabs will be blank, and these are for you to use to segment your research subjects. So to begin filling in the spreadsheet, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit and ask, at the end of the day, how many research subjects am I gonna want? And this of course depends on a lot of factors, including the resources you have to conduct this research. So for my purposes, I'm gonna say, I don't have much money to complete the research, it's a small study. So let's say my target number of subjects is 20 people. Now that I have this number, we're gonna be working backwards from it a little bit and say, okay, at the end of the day, we have 20 research subjects. How do we want those research subjects to be distributed across various characteristics, across various dimensions? And so to start with something simple, let's say I'm interested in having a pretty even split of gender in my research subjects. So in this first table here, the dimension is gender, and then the characteristics for gender are male and female, and I enter them here. And now, if I jump over to my Recruits tab, I'll see that there's a little drop-down menu that has auto-populated with male and female, my two characteristics from Dimension Table A. Of course, I can rename that at some point, but it is A because it is the first table here. And now the order of this will vary, but basically there's going to be interplay between this table and my list of recruits here. As when I populate this list with people and I fill in whether they are male and female, it will be calculated against my desired percentage. And so let's say I'd want to have 50% male and 50% female. As you can see, it's now telling me that my desired percentage of 50% means that I will have to have 10 female subjects and 10 male subjects. But if we look at these two columns that say actual percentage and actual number, these aren't ready quite yet. And that's because while the desired columns are simply using your desired percentage and calculating it with your target subjects up in the left, these actual percentage and actual numbers columns will be pulling from your recruits tab as you fill in your recruits in real time as they sign up to participate in your study. So what you're doing is just getting an idea for how many people do you want fitting each characteristic and then you're comparing that to your actual number of people with those characteristics as they are added to your list of research subjects on the recruits tab. So as I get people to sign up to participate in my study, I will put in their names and information on the Recruits tab. And I will be able to look back at the Calculations tab and see when I have the number of people for each characteristic that I want. So now that I have a good idea of what I want the gender breakdown to be for my research subjects, I'm going to start recruiting my research subjects and compiling them on the Recruits tab.
So now I have filled in over 20 research subjects with their first name and last name and this first dimension of gender. Obviously, when you're doing this, you'll probably have all the dimensions at once, but I'm just going one by one here. So I have over 20 subjects and, you know, let's see, do I have the divide in genders that I want? And if I look back here, the answer is clearly no. And as you can see, because I have more than enough men, this cell is turning green. But because I am at under 10 female subjects, this one is turning red. And so the great thing about this is everything is connected in such a way that I can either decide I want to stick to this 50-50 breakdown of males and females and go get more female research subjects. And when I get those female research subjects, they will be added to the recruits tab. And the actual percentage and actual number will update in real time. Alternately, if I decide that I don't really need a 50-50 breakdown and I'm fine with a 75 male, 25% female breakdown, all I have to change is this desired percentage box. If, say, I decide, you know what, maybe it is fine to have 75% men and 25% women. Now my conditions are satisfied because I have shifted my desired percentages. But my list of actual recruits has stayed the same. So that's just an example of the interplay between the desired percentage, which is you saying at the end of the day, this is what I want my group of research subjects to look like, and comparing that to your list of recruits as they come together in real time. So now that we've gone over the gender dimension, let's say another dimension I'm interested in is age. So I will use this second table here and in the left-hand corner put age. And now, if I'm thinking about the characteristics for age, I'll just break it out into some segments. So it would be ages 21 to 30, ages 31 to 40, and ages 41 to 50. And now if we go back to the Recruits tab, we can see that in column E here, I have a nice drop-down menu with all of the options. And to go back here, I am now going to decide how many I want of each characteristic. So let's say I am a little less interested in older respondents. I'll do 35% 21 to 30, 35% 31 to 40, and 30% 41 to 50. As you can see, these boxes here are updating in real time because they're simply applying these percentages to our number of target subjects. But these cells here are not updating because we have not filled in anyone's age yet. So I will go ahead and fill in ages for all of these people. So now I have filled in the age classification for each research subject here. And I'm now going to simply go back to my calculations tab and right away, I have an indication of how I'm stacking up against my desired percentages. And I actually do not have enough of people on the older side of 41 to 50 years old. So this tells me that, very simply speaking, I need two more people who are between 41 and 50, and then I will have satisfied my requirements for the dimension of age. And so to recap, the beauty of the spreadsheet is that all I have to do is fill in my recruits as I get them. And then this calculations tab will tell me how I'm doing in terms of putting together a group of research subjects that reflect my customers in real life.